Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Unsettling and Shocking Art of Victorian Death Photography Now in English history, we associate morbid times with the medieval period and the Tudor period, where times were bloody and barbaric. But the Victorian period is more remembered for being a time in which the British Empire was at its height, and despite Britain becoming incredibly wealthy as a world power, it was at the expense of others. Victorian England is associated with the poor working classes struggling to find work, and working for low wages, but completing long hours. It was a time in some senses of progress. For example, in medicine, with different inventions and remedies making healthcare better. But in some senses, the Victorian period was a very strange time. And nothing epitomises this more than the disturbing fascination with death that many had. Death was everywhere, disease was also common, and the average life expectancy was rather low. But during this time, people came up with bizarre, morose and crazy ways to remember the dead. One way of doing this was by photographing corpses and dead bodies. But why did they do this? Losing a loved one is always incredibly hard, and always has been, but to cope, the Victorians would arrange for photo shoots to capture a dead relative. Photography itself emerged during this time, with black and white photographs depicting families in scenes. But despite photographs being rather primitive, they captured the time period in a way that had never been done before. The images showed real people and real life, where previously the rich would commission painters to work on portraits to show them in good light. Photographs were obviously initially only used by the upper classes. Such was the expense and the process of printing. But within Victorian society, there was a business in which photographers would take images of dead bodies for the benefit of the family. Post-mortem portraits were very popular, and it was for most people their first taste of photography, because the new technology, which allowed them to keep a permanent image of their dead relative, it's most probably that the relative would never have been photographed during their time alive. But now that they would be lying on a bed, arranged in certain manner, and shot with a camera. Today we view these death photographs as rather disturbing, but for people living during the 19th century, it provided a significant amount of comfort during a great time of loss. Photography was an exciting development, and many wanted to capture some of the biggest moments of life on camera and that included death. At the time, most people didn't live past their forties, such was the quality of life, and often diseases would spread which would take down children and also older people. We're talking about a time where there was no antibiotics to cure outbreaks of illness, with specific infirmities such as scarlet fever, measles and cholera haunting towns. There was also no vaccinations, and when family members died, the family wished to have a permanent reminder of their relative's time on earth, hence why a photo shoot was arranged. In many of these pictures, especially the ones involving children, mothers are seen cradling their dead child, and fathers can be seen looking ominously over the deathbed. Photographers were even brought dead children to photograph inside of their studio, with heartbroken parents in some cases bringing newly born deceased babies to the photography studio. As the period continued, the art of photography became more accessible and cheaper, and death photographers began to learn how to pose children and adults in certain ways. They would arrange the body in such a way to make it look like the deceased was sleeping in a peaceful manner, which would give some solace and comfort to the grieving family, especially to parents. Some even began to alter their equipment so that the image came out with a hint of life in the cheeks of the person. One author, Mary Russell Mitford, wrote how following her father's death in 1842, she had arranged a death photo shoot, and the photograph she received had a heavenly claim in it, and brought her much comfort. There had been a tradition in preserving images of dead children before photographs, as paintings in the Stuart period were commissioned by wealthy families. At the time in the Victorian period, the art of photographing the dead was seen as much easier than capturing life subjects, as they weren't allowed to move, 
and because of slow shutter speed, subjects who were being captured needed to stay incredibly still. If not, it would simply burr. So, photographing the dead was seen as easier for the photographer. Despite us today, considering that it could have possibly been a rather depressing thing to do. Most post-mortem pictures were usually taken at home too, meaning that often, with doctors, the photographer would be called once someone had passed. The relatives would often style the hair of the dead person, and some even opened their eyes, with the scene around them also being decorated with flowers. Some symbols, like a stopped clock or an hourglass, represented that the person's time was up. Sometimes were fetched too, and other family members would dress up to be a part of the photograph. Possibly the most disturbing death photographs are those featuring children, and in some cases children were photographed shortly after death with their siblings brought into the pictures too, to be captured with their sister or brother who had passed away. It's clear that there was some degree of pre preparation in these images, as often the children are all wearing matching clothes too. Sometimes makeup was applied to the deceased, and in some cases even the photographer offered to paint open eyes on the final image. We're talking about a period in time in which there was a significant amount of respect for the dead in society. For example, when Queen Victoria's husband Albert passed away, she wore mourning clothes and black for a long period of time. It was common for widows to wear black for years following the death of their spouse, and some even took hair from dead loved ones to be preserved in jewellery. If you walk around a graveyard in the UK today, you'll definitely come across ornate and huge tombs and gravestones dedicated to someone who died in the 1800s, with these markers being elaborate, and in some cases spooky. Victorians often kept mementos as well, reminders of death in respect and honour to the dead. And they even went further, creating death masks. A mask maker would place oil over the dead person's face to create an imprint, and today, some of the most famous of society had this practice performed, even the Queen. Death masks have been around since ancient times, as the preservation of dead in reminder, such as in Egypt with the use of mummies. Families in the Victorian period placed death marks even on mantelpieces and on walls. There are some fake Victorian death images, for example, there are cases where sleeping people were photographed and they had been linked to the concept of death photography, however, it's today looked upon as a rather backward and shocking industry, but death photography, for many relatives who have lost a loved one, served as a purpose to help them cope with their loss. Today we have these remarkable images which show corpses looking sleeping, with much life occurring around them. It's a bizarre concept, but an incredibly interesting one. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.